simply thank you and seeing another day and spending this day with us. So let's look at this all over again and, and just pray for me as we move forward. Soon because I can't hear anything or I can't see anything. So I am just going to be doing this as if um, I'm speaking to an audience that I can't hear or see. Well, let's bow our heads together. Father, we come before you thanking you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity of seeing another day. We want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of waking up this morning, understanding that it was you that woke us up today. Five o'clock, Lord, we have promised and sacrificed this time that we can share with you and spend with you. So today, we come before you simply asking you to help us to connect and reconnect with you. So bless us today and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so today, I want to thank you for joining us on our 17th day of Bible Boot Camp. We have reached our 17th day of Bible Boot Camp. We are way over the hump now, and we are looking at, uh, from here to the end of February, of sacrificing our time. All month long, we've been speaking about reconnecting with Him. That's right, reconnecting to Christ. And today will be no different. We're looking to reconnect to Jesus Christ. And so we ask you that you would uh, just simply uh, spend this time asking for the Holy Spirit to bless us. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about today was simply understanding that uh, the Word of God and prayer and also having a life that shows through obedience is how we connect to Jesus Christ. All, all week long last week, we've been saying a prayer, and this week, we want to share a special prayer with you also. This prayer we'll be saying throughout the whole week because we believe that if we look towards God and His love, He will help us in our lives this week. So we say, Lord, please calm my heart and my soul today. So many things are out of my control and I need your love to soothe me and calm me. Your love lets me know it's going to be okay. And all week long, we're going to be saying that prayer. Remember, last week we said this prayer. This week, we're saying this prayer. So say this prayer with me, everyone. Lord, please calm my heart and my soul today. So many things are out of my control. I need your love to soothe me and calm me. Your love lets me know that it will be okay. And so it was such a, such a prayer that will help us to the day, knowing that it will be okay. For those who are in the Maryland area, uh, I know it was kind of hard getting up because we know that for many of us, we don't have to go to school. Some of us don't have to go to work at all simply because the snow came down in buckets. And so in light of that, we have this extra time of spending uh, with our families. And so I'm simply asking for each one of us to, uh, to, to be safe out there uh, for those who are in this area and be careful. Well, I wanted to share a special song with you, uh, a special song that uh, we played earlier today, a special song that uh, will help us uh, just along the way. It's a song that talks about our calling. Jonathan Nelson has a beautiful song, which, which really asks us the question, if we are called, then we ought to be, uh, to, to be called, to act called, to do what we believe that God has asked us to do. And so this morning, I want to share another song with you by Jonathan Nelson, uh, checking on us to see if we're called. Now here's brand new music from the latest single on Jonathan Nelson. It's called Call to Be. Let's hear this new music. Come on, Jonathan. In the journey of life, there are winding roads. Mountains high and valleys low. Though the road ahead may be unknown. I'm still focused on the prize that's worth pressing for. I will be what you called me to be. I say yes. Passionately needs to be what you've 
That's what I All wrong signs read destiny. How far, Lord, wherever you lead, nothing can hinder me. But the prize is all. That was brand new music from the latest single on Jonathan Nelson. My desire is to be what you want me to be. Lord, I want to be what you want me to be. It's so amazing that God can use us. He can use us anytime, anywhere, at any age. And today, God wants to use us. He wants us to be used. And so as we connect to him and be reconnected to him, He's going to use us no matter what. You're going to ask yourself the question, Lord, what do you want me to do today? In some way, somehow, we can be, or we, we really can be used. Today, I wanted to share something again with you, something I listened to the other day, that I just uh, uh, knew that this little boy was being used by something that happened at his home. And so even though we've heard this before, I hope that this encourages you, and it encourages you to always look at what God wants for us. Hey, Mike, can I talk to you? You bet, Logan. What's up? I want to tell you something that God just told me. Okay. Last night, my dad was roping this calf. And this calf had been born from a really old cow. She, she didn't have 
really the greatest milk. She didn't have like the vitamin C and stuff. Okay. Hold on. Mom? So cute, I guess, is mom just talking to you. I'm talking right now. I'll be up in a But sorry about that. But anyway, she broke her back. And this morning I went out and put her down myself. I was talking to God. I was asking God why she was special. And God said, you know, Logan, but my son was special, but he died for a purpose. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. That calf was close to me, and God's son was close to him. Logan, you're, you're so right. It's true. Think you're going to be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. But I just... I wanted to tell you guys that that is so important. Just remember, when you lose a loved one or a pet, always remember that God gave his son too, and he understands. He will always understand. He will always just run to him. Logan, you're wiser than you know, buddy. Sometimes I don't think I'm wise. Uh, trust me, I've done a lot of stupid stuff. But I've learned from it. Yeah, but see, buddy, that's what makes you wise, somebody that learns from their mistakes. Oh, I just figured I'd better call and share with you guys. Love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, absolutely amazing. About this little boy who's absolutely amazing in seeing the lessons, seeing the lessons in even uh, a situation happening at his home. And how are we able to see lessons? How are we able to know certain lessons for ourselves? The best way that we can learn lessons for ourselves is simply reading the Word of God, understanding the Word of God. And so as we look to connect and reconnect to him, this morning we want to go to water for the thirsty. And so before we pray, I believe it's important for each one of us to uh, be a part of a reading plan. You know, find a way, make a plan to read the word of God. And so this morning we are going back into water for the thirsty. Water for the thirsty is a reading plan, a reading plan that just tells us about the word, which is simply refreshing. So all month long, we've been going to Water for the Thirst. You're going to the book of Acts so far, now Leviticus, because before we went through Exodus and through the Psalms. But today, we want to look at Acts 24, Leviticus 6 and 7, and Psalm 17. Now, I want to take you through just a little bit of three of these uh, chapters, or three of these accounts. And so uh, we really want you to know that as we go into the Word of God, it helps you to reconnect to Him. There are three ways that we can reconnect to Christ. Number one is reading His Word. Number two is having an active prayer life. And number three is living the life through that kind of testimony through obedience. And so in this, we want the Holy Spirit to be with us as we look to reconnect to Him through His Word. Father, again, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done. We thank you for life and for strength and the opportunity to look into your word just one more time. And so we're asking that whatever is said and done will be pleasing to you, Lord, and that as we read this and understand your word, we'll come to understand who you are. So bless as I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look at these verses, Acts chapter 24, Psalm 17, Leviticus 6 and 7, I want to look at Acts chapter 24. In Acts chapter 24, we find where Paul is having a dialogue with Felix. Felix is the governor, and he's the governor at this time who uh, was almost persuaded by Paul's preaching, almost persuaded by Paul's under, uh, helping him understand who Christ is. You see, he was brought before Felix because the Jews were sick and tired of Paul. They were tired of him preaching. And they called him a rebel rouser. 
And so in order to stop this kind of a rebel rousing around the Jews or with the Jews, they put him in jail for two years. And while Paul is in jail for two years, he is up against Felix, who has a bad reputation because he's taking someone else's wife. He also has a bad reputation because he's only looking to make the Jews feel better. But we recognize that even though Paul is in jail, he's preaching, he's still giving the message. He's still letting them know of a Christ who came and died, a Christ who was resurrected, and a Christ who was coming back for them. You see, it was really tough for him. But the question is that though it was tough for him and though he was locked up and though he suffered this kind of persecution, the word of God tells us that he still persevered and, and, and did what Christ wanted him to do. You know, sometimes we're in a state that we're in. Sometimes our boss has given us a hard time. Sometimes our families are giving us a hard time. We look all around us and see that we're not um, having such a nice time, so to speak. And then we forget about Christ right then and there. But we learned this lesson from Paul that even though he was going through a rough time, he still spoke of the mercies of God. Amazing. And then when we look at uh, Leviticus 6 and 7, we find ourselves in a place where we are now looking at sin offerings and meat offerings, uh, 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 peace offerings. And we recognize that through the forgiveness of sins, we have to do all of these offerings to be uh, connected to Christ. And uh, we're so glad that we're living in a day now where we don't need all these offerings to be connected to Christ. We don't have a veil between us before we can be connected to Christ. We just have to come asking him to forgive, the, to forgive us of our sins, asking him to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and he will make us new. You see, the Leviticus book, the book of Leviticus, uh, is helping us to understand the work of the Levites, uh, interceding for us, doing the work daily so that we can have our sins forgiven, so that we can come to Christ. They stand as a mediator between us and God. And now there is no mediator. Or let me say it this way. Now there is no one standing between us for the forgiveness of sins. And so we have Christ. Christ is our high priest. And as we look at this, I want you to know today that God is asking us to be the offering, to live our lives, to be that offering that God wants us to be. That means living right, talking right, acting right, being right, being called to what he wants us to be. And then as we look at Psalm 17, David, is that David gives us an understanding of how he relies on God. And how he looks at God as one who preserves us. He looks at God as one who is always into uh, uh, taking care of us. And I want to say it this way. He, he clearly says that when it comes to our enemies, he always uplifts us. But all, what I like about uh, Psalm 17, especially verse 8, is when David says that, Lord, keep me the apple of your eye. When you look at the original language of what they mean by the apple of uh, our eye. It's always a teacher and a pupil relationship. It's always a teacher and a child relationship or a pupil relationship or a student relationship, which says that the teacher is going to do everything that they can to protect their child, to protect the student. And so David is simply saying, Lord, you are that kind of God, the God that protects me from all things. So today we want God to keep us as the apple of his eye. Today, we want you to be the Christian that God has called you to be, that God has called us to be. When we look at this and we understand through his word that he wants to preserve us, that he wants us to still look to him, though we're going through rough times, and that he wants us to be an offering, we simply say, Lord, do what you will with us so that we can be called to be who you want us to be. And so today, on this 17th day of Bible Boot Camp, we lift up Christ one more time. Now, I want you to know that you can follow us in our Bible reading plan. And in this Bible reading plan, you can download the Bible reading plan at waterfullofthirsty.com. You can download us, download this at waterfullofthirsty.com. And if you'd like to leave your prayer request, at fcmbootcamp 
at gmail.com. That's fcmbootcamp at gmail.com. In light of this, we believe that Water for the Thirsty will be great for you as a Bible reading plan to follow each and every day. And at the end of the year, you can simply say, I know him more than I knew him even yesterday. Now I want to do something different today. There's a song that we played yesterday, a song that simply said, no charge. And I'm going to ask you that you'll write out your prayer request. I'm going to ask everyone to read the different prayer requests that everyone puts out. And so as we do that, I want to play a song. So instead of me praying, I'm going to ask you to pray for each one. I also want to thank you for your patience with me today because I can't hear anything where I am, but it seems like you are hearing everything. And I'm glad that the Holy Spirit is still working. So since the Holy Spirit is still working, I'm going to ask him to work through our prayer lives today. So right now, um, I'm going to play this song as we, as we write down our different prayer requests in the chat room. And then I'm going to play another song called No Charge by, uh, by Shirley Caesar, which really talks about the fact that Christ gave his life for us and it is no charge. Absolutely no charge. So let's write out our prayer requests right now as we look for more power and more prayer. I'm looking at the different prayer requests, and I believe, I believe that God will answer our prayers. You know, there's something that I want to share with you. I want to share with you that we need to pray about it more than we talk about it. So have you prayed about it more than you talked about it? Well, right now, we want to pray. And as you're praying right now, know that prayer is the key to all the treasures of this life and the hereafter. So let's look at these prayer requests. Look at all these prayer requests. We're praying for Sean today. We're praying that he guides that that God will guide him over this five and a half hour, uh, and, and five and a half hour board exam in Philly. I, I'm I'm looking right now, Lord, that you'll bless him. Mari for her, her mom, Claudette for traveling mercies. Um, we're looking at stable housing for Angela, Marcia for her children, faith, finances, and fortitude. We're going to be praying. But let's look at all of that. Everyone who's praying right now, let's pray for this as we listen to this song. And I want to share with you the pick of the day because after the song, we're going to keep moving forward and we're going to get some rest. Okay. So at this time, we want everyone to be praying. But the pick of the day I want to share with you is 
I'm sorry, the pick of the day that I want to share with you is a pick that says that the purpose of life is a life of purpose. The purpose of life is a life of purpose. Let's pray together. Let's listen to the song. Let's pray together knowing that God is with us. I want to thank you for joining us at Bible Boot Camp. And thank you for joining us on this, uh, on this 17th day. As we reconnect to him, let's understand that through his word, we can be stronger than we've ever been. Let's pray and let's listen to this song called No Charge. boy came into the kitchen one evening while she was fixing supper and he handed her a piece of paper he'd been writing on and after wiping her hands on an apron she took it in her hands and she read it and this is what it said for more in the yard five dollars if I'm making up my own bed this week one dollar for going to the store 50 cents and playing with the little brother while you went shopping 25 cents take it out the trash one dollar and for getting a good report card five dollars and for raking the yard two dollars total owed 14.75 well she looked at him standing there and expecting and a thousand memories flashed through her mind. So she picked up the pen and turned the paper over. And this is what she wrote. When I don't Calvin gave his life as a ransom for me. When I think on the words, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And I like to think that the very minute that he shedded his blood, my debt was paid in full. And I want you to know today. 